الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبیین اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بلیسنگز آف سعیدنا معروف القرخی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ سپلیکیشن آف اطار او اللہ ہو ایور ریڈز اور لسنس ٹو دا بکلٹ بلیسنگز آف سعیدنا معروف القرخی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ Grant him the blessings of the pious predecessors, rahimahumullah. Forgive him and his family without accountability. And grant him the companionship of the beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen bijahi khatamin nabiyyin, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Virtue of sending salat upon the beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Allah Almighty looks with mercy towards the one who sends salat upon me and whoever Allah Almighty looks towards with mercy will never be punished. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad. 500 gold coins. Sayyiduna Abu Abbas Mu'adhib rahmatullahi alayhi said, A Sayyid who lived in my neighborhood told me about a time when he was extremely poor. He said, when my wife gave birth, there was nothing in the home for her to eat. Upset, she said, my state is apparent to you. I need food in order to overcome this weakness. For the sake of Allah Almighty, please do something. I became anxious after seeing her condition. So after performing Isha, I went to the store. I went there often, but I was indebted to the shopkeeper. I explained the situation and asked for some provisions. I made the intention to pay him back as soon as possible, but he refused to help. So in this state of anxiety, I went to another shopkeeper and explained my situation, but he refused too. I went to everyone I had hope in, but none of them helped me. I was dejected, and while thinking about who I could turn to next, I went towards the Tigris River. I saw a boatman waiting for passengers, so I boarded the boat and it set sail. The boatman asked where I was headed, and I replied that I did not know. Astounded, the boatman said, You boarded the boat and you do not know your destination. I told the boatman about the situation at home and he said compassionately, My brother, do not be distraught. I will try my best to relieve you of this worry. The boat stopped at the river bank and we went to a nearby masjid. The sailor said, My brother, There is a pious man who spends the entire day and night worshipping in this masjid. Ask him to pray for you. If Allah Almighty wills, your problems will be solved. After performing ablution, I entered the masjid and saw the pious man praying in the mihrab. I performed two cycles of prayer and sat next to him. Once the pious man finished praying, he said, May Allah Almighty have mercy upon you. Who are you? I explained everything and he listened attentively. Then he started praying again. It started raining outside and it dawned on me that I was far away from home. What is the condition of my family and how will I get back to them in this weather? Meanwhile, a man entered the masjid and sat next to the pious man who was praying. When he finished praying, the man said, My master, I am the representative of so and so. He conveys you his salam and sends a gift. Upon hearing this, the pious man said, Give this money to the Sayyid over there. The man was surprised and exclaimed, This is 500 dinars. The pious man insisted, So he gave it all to me. I put all the money in my shawl, thanked the pious man and headed home through the rain. When I returned to my neighborhood, I went to the first shopkeeper I had turned to and said, 
Allah Almighty has granted me 500 dinars from the treasures of his sustenance. Take the amount I owe you and give me food. The shopkeeper replied, Keep the money with you for now and take what you need. So he gave me honey, sugar, sesame oil, rice, fat and more. I was unable to carry all the food, so he helped me take it home. When we got there, the door was open and my wife said, I was in a critical condition and my hunger and weakness made it worse. Where did you go? I replied, by the mercy and grace of Allah Almighty, our worries are no more. Look at all this food. We have butter, meat, sugar, oil and a lot more. She was elated and we all ate and thanked Allah Almighty. In the morning, I showed my wife the dinars and she was very happy and expressed gratitude to Allah Almighty. Then we purchased land so we could cultivate it and cover our expenses. Through the blessings of the pious man, Allah Almighty removed our poverty. May Allah Almighty grant him goodness on our behalf. May Allah Almighty have mercy upon them and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Ameen. Bijahi khatamin nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Do you know who the pious man is? The one whose supplications were accepted. He is the ninth spiritual guide of the Qadriya, Radhaviya, Attariya spiritual order. Sayyiduna Maruf al karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Introduction. The name of this illustrious Tabatabi'in pious predecessor is Maruf and his technonym is Abu Mahfuz. He was born in Baghdad in the area of Karh. He, which is why he is called al karhi He is from the generation after the Tabi'un and a follower of Imam Al-Azam, the master of the jurists, Imam Abu Hanifa Numan bin Thabit Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Accepting Islam. The members of Sayyiduna Maruf al karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi's family were not Muslims at first. But due to the mercy of Allah Almighty and through the blessings of Sayyiduna Maruf al karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, they all accepted Islam. The event that led them to accept Islam is very interesting. His brother explains, Me and my brother Maruf al karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi studied together. We were non-Muslims at the time and our non-Muslim teacher promoted polytheism and disbelief. As he taught this, my brother would say, Ahad, Ahad, Allah is one, Allah is one, in a loud voice. The teacher beat him regularly and one day he beat him so much that he went missing. His mother cried and said, If Allah Almighty returns Maruf to me, I will follow the religion he is on. After a few years, Maruf al karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi returned to his mother and she asked, My son, which religion do you follow? He replied, The religion of Islam. Then my mother recited the Shahada and we all accepted Islam. May Allah Almighty have mercy upon them and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Amin bijahi khatamin nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Shajala Qadriya Razawiya Attariya The renowned spiritual guide and leader of Ahlu Sunnah, Mawlana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Damad Barakat Mulaliya has given his followers and devotees the Shajala Qadriya Razawiya Attariya. In it, a supplication is made through the intermediation of Sayyiduna Maruf al karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi and the 10th Shaykh of the spiritual order Sayyiduna Sari al Sakati Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Behre Maruf o Sari Maruf Debe Khud Sari Meanings of words Bahr for the sake of Maruf goodness Be Khud Sari humility and obedience Translation O Allah Almighty, grant me goodness for the sake of Sayyiduna Maruf al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi 
and grant me humility for the sake of Sayyiduna Sari al Sakati Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Amin Bijahi Khatam in Nabiyin Sallallahu Alayhi wa Alihi wa Sallam. Arabic Shajara, the reviver of Islam, the Imam of Ahlu Sunnah, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Alayhi, wrote a Shajara in Arabic in the form of Salat. He mentions Sayyiduna Maruf al Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi like so. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa alayhim wa ala al-mawla al-shaykh ma'roof in al-karhi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. O Allah Almighty, send your mercy and blessings upon the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and upon our master, Shaykh Maruf al-karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. Non-Muslim family accepts Islam. Sayyiduna Amir bin Abdullah al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi said, A non-Muslim neighbor came to me and said, O oh Abu Amir, I have rights over you as your neighbor. I ask you for the sake of the one who created the days and nights. Take me to a saint of Allah Almighty, so I can ask him to pray for the birth of a son. My heart yearns for a son. So I took him to Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi and explained the situation. The Shaykh invited him to accept Islam. But he replied, O oh Maruf, you cannot guide me unless Allah Almighty guides me first. I have only come to ask you to pray for me. After that, Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi made the following supplication. O oh Allah Almighty, grant him a son who treats his parents well and at whose hands his parents accept Islam. Allah Almighty accepted the supplication of his servant and granted the man a son who was more intelligent than all the children in the neighborhood. When he grew older, his father took him to a school to learn about their religion. The non-Muslim teacher gave him a slate and told him to repeat. But the child spoke up. My tongue is prevented from calling something other than Allah a God, and my heart is filled with love for him. After that, the child spoke about Allah Almighty in such a beautiful way that the teacher's heart came to life, and he came to know that Islam was the truth. Then the child recited poetry, whose meaning is somewhat as follows. Is he not truthful, the one who causes us to laugh and cry, the one who gives life and death and makes crops grow for creation? Without doubt, only he is worthy of worship, and those who turn to other than him are in loss. He hides the sins of his people, grants whatever they need, even when they do not ask, and he forgives the sinners. Upon hearing this faith-inspiring discourse, the teacher was astounded and testified to the oneness of Allah Almighty and the prophethood of the greatest prophet وسلم, in his heart. Then the teacher took the child to his father. Beaming with happiness, the father asked, how intelligent is my child? The teacher explained what happened and the father said, I swear by Allah Almighty, my son reached this rank because of the supplication of Sayyiduna Ma'roof Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. I testify there is none worthy of worship except Allah Almighty and Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, is his messenger. Then the entire family accepted Islam too. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ala Muhammad. The station of Sayyiduna Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi gained a lot of knowledge from Imam Ali Ridha Rahmatullahi Alayhi, who was a great saint of his era. Sayyiduna Abu Al-Wahhab Rahmatullahi Alayhi said, 
I have not seen a greater Zahid ascetic than Maruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. Walking on water and flying in the air. Sayyiduna ibn Mardawiyya rahmatullahi alayhi said, One day we were sitting in the company of Maruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi and I saw his face beaming. So I asked him, O oh Abu Mahfuz, I heard that you can walk on water. He replied, I have never walked on water, but when I intend to cross it, its two ends join. So I place my foot on it and traverse it. Sayyiduna Hassan bin Abdul Wahhab rahmatullahi said, People say Maruf al karhi can walk on water. If I was told he could fly in the air, I would believe that too. Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullahi alayhi addresses Sayyiduna Ma'roof al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi in this Persian poetry. Ya Shahe Ma'roof Ma'ra Rah Suwe Ma'roof De. Translation, O Ma'roof al karhi O King of Piety, guide us to goodness. The status of Sayyiduna Ma'roof al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi and the basis of knowledge. The Imam of millions of Hanbalis, Sayyiduna Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, and the great Muhaddith Sayyiduna Yahya bin Ma'in rahmatullahi alayhi gained knowledge from Sayyiduna Ma'roof al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. The son of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, Abdullah rahmatullahi alayhi said, I asked my father, I learned that you used to go to Ma'roof al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. Did he have knowledge of hadith? Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi answered, My dear son, he had the root of the matter, i.e. he had taqwa, the fear of Allah Almighty. Sajda as sahaw Once Sayyiduna Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi and Sayyiduna Yahya bin Ma'in rahmatullahi alayhi visited Sayyiduna Ma'roof al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. The Muhaddith wanted to ask about Sajda Tassahu, but Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi told him to remain silent. However, Sayyiduna Yahya bin Ma'in could not hold back and ask, O oh Abu Mahfuz, what do you say regarding Sajda Tassahu? Sayyiduna Ma'roof al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi said, It is a punishment for the heart that becomes heedless and focuses on other than Allah Almighty during the prayer. Upon hearing this, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi said, This shows your level of intellect, good character and blessed habits. Sayyiduna Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi only turned towards outward means at the time of need and only took to the extent of his necessity. He rahmatullahi alayhi would say, I am a guest in the house of Allah Almighty. I eat if he feeds me and I adopt patience if he keeps me hungry, until he gives me food. He neither hoarded anything, nor did he have great aspirations. Rather, due to the high rank of sainthood he attained, whenever he finished a prayer, he did not have hope of remaining alive until the next prayer. After performing the Dhuhr prayer, he would tell his companions to find someone to lead the Asr prayer. It was as if he was acting upon this hadith. Oath by the one in whose power is my soul. Whenever I blink, I think Allah will take my soul before my eyes open. Whenever I open my eyes, I think death will come to me before I close them. When I eat a morsel of food, I think death will come to me before I swallow it. O children of Adam, if you are intelligent, consider yourselves from the dead because what has been promised will come to pass. O devotees of the noble saints, life passes in the blink of an eye and we do not know if we have lived most of our lives or not. Death can come at any time, in any place, so prepare for it, remember it abundantly and live your lives according to the Sunnah. At the time of death, may our last words be the Shahada and Salat, and may we be in Medina beholding the beloved Prophet.
صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله على محمد trembling whilst delivering the azan sayyiduna abu bakr bin abu talib rahmatullahi alayhi said i entered the masjid of ma'ruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi and i joined the people in a gathering ma'ruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi entered and said assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah and we replied he supplicated to allah almighty to grant us peaceful lives and to relieve us and him of worries when he started delivering the azan the fear of allah almighty overwhelmed him and he began to tremble when he said ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah the hair of his eyebrows and beard stood up and i feared he would be unable to complete the azan his back lowered and he was close to falling to the ground from baghdad to makka once sayyiduna maruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi desired to perform tawaf so he left his city during the night traveled to makka performed tawaf and returned home o devotees of the noble saints one of the marvels allah almighty blessed the noble saints with is tayyul ard which means the folding of the earth through the bestowal of allah almighty they can travel many miles with one step so that a month long journey is covered by them in a few minutes sayyiduna ma'ruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi was also blessed with this ability to traverse the earth quickly what allah almighty wills comes to pass a man visited sayyiduna ma'ruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi and said I was blessed with a child this morning. You are the first person I have told. So goodness can enter our home through your blessings. Ma'ruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi replied, May Allah Almighty keep you in his protection. Sit here and say ma sha Allah kana. Ai whatever Allah Almighty wills will happen. 100 times After reciting it 100 times the shaykh instructed him to recite it again when he had repeated it the shaykh informed him to recite further in short he instructed him to recite in this manner 5 times meanwhile the servant of the mother of a minister arrived with a bag and letter and said o oh, my master umm jafar conveys you salam She sent this bag to you and asked if you can distribute it amongst the poor. Upon hearing this, Sayyiduna Ma'ruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi said, "Give the money to that man because he was blessed with a child." The servant informed him that it totaled 500 dirhams and asked if he should give it all to the man. The Sheikh answered, "Yes, give it all to him." He recited Ma sha Allah kana 500 times then he turned to the man and said may you be granted blessings in these 500 dirhams if you had recited more he would have increased it the same amount go and spend it on your family sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad Patience grants proximity to Allah Almighty. Someone said to Sayyiduna Ma'ruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi, "O oh Sayyidi, how can I become closer to Allah Almighty?" The Sheikh took him to the home of a rich man, where a servant with a broken leg was standing by the door. The Sheikh pointed towards him and said, "Become like him and you will be closer to Allah Almighty." I just as the servant is standing at the door of his master with a broken leg always be content with the will of Allah almighty and worship him greeting shaykh abdul qadir al jilani rahmatullahi alayhi the spiritual successor of shaykh abdul qadir al jilani shaykh ali bin haiti rahmatullahi alayhi said i went with shaykh abdul qadir al jilani rahmatullahi alayhi 
to the shrine of Maruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. My Shaykh gave him salam and we heard a reply from the shrine. Wa alayka salamu ya Sayyida ahli zaman. Peace be upon you, O leader of the people of the age. Humility in the court of Allah Almighty. Sayyiduna Qasim Baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi said, I was Maruf Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi's neighbor. One night I heard him crying as he recited this poetry. Which thing wants me to sin? It clings to me and does not part from me. If you show me mercy and forgive me, these sins cannot harm me. For now I have reached old age. Supplication of Sayyiduna Ma'roof Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi A man said to Sayyiduna Ma'roof Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi O Sayyidi, ask Allah Almighty to soften my heart. The Shaykh encouraged him to recite this supplication. Ya mulayyin al-qulubi alayyin qalbi qabla an tulayyina inda al-mawt. O softener of the hearts, soften my heart before softening it at the time of death. Amin bijahi khatam in nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. What is tenderness of the heart? Tenderness of the heart is a great blessing of Allah Almighty. The beloved Prophet ﷺ said, Consider supplication when the heart is tender as a treasure, for it is a mercy. The scholars describe softness of the heart as a sign from the signs of a fortunate individual. An excellent example of piety. Sayyidina Ubaid bin Muhammad Warraq rahmatullahi alayhi said, One day Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi was travelling somewhere when he saw a piece of wood in the path. Instead of stepping on it, he stepped over it. He was asked about this and he said, I stepped over it to avoid worrying the owner. If he stepped on it, it could have weakened, broken or become marked. So due to this risk, he stepped over it to avoid putting the owner in difficulty. Caution of the leader of Ahlu Sunnah, Damad Barakat Mul Aliya. The actions of the leader of Ahlu Sunnah, Mawlana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Al Qadari, Damad Barakat Mul Aliya, remind us of the pious predecessors. He is also very scrupulous in religious matters. Here is an event that will encourage us to adopt a mindset of not suppressing people's rights. The following is a summary of the account of an Islamic brother from Nab Nawab Shah Sin, Pakistan. Mawlana Muhammad Ilyas Sattar Al Qadari Damad Barakatul Aliya was traveling somewhere with some Islamic brothers, and I was fortunate to be with them. As we were walking through a narrow street, we saw a pile of gravel on the floor. The Sheikh said there was a risk of wasting the gravel if we walked this way. So we backtracked and took a different route to avoid this. May Allah Almighty have mercy upon him and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Ameen bi jahi khatam in nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad. Freedom from the world. The 10th Shaykh of the Qadariya Radhaviyya At-Tariya Spiritual Order, Sayyiduna Sari Al-Saqati Rahmatullahi Alayhi said, I said to Maruf Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, How are the obedient slaves of Allah Almighty able to remain obedient to Him? He replied, Due to the love of the world exiting their hearts. If the love of the world was in their hearts, they would be unable to perform a single prostration correctly, passing away in Baghdad. Sayyiduna Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi said, I was commanded to die in Baghdad because the righteous people of that city are from the true Abdal, death. The ninth Shaykh of the Qadariya Razaviyya At-Tariya spiritual order Sayyiduna Ma'roof al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi passed away on the 2nd of Muharram 
200 AH, three, 300,000 people participated in his funeral prayer. His eminent resting place is located in Baghdad, approximately six kilometers away from the resting place of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jinani. Thousands of people visit his resting place to receive blessings and for the acceptance of their supplications. 120,000 sinners relieved from punishment. A pious predecessor said, One year after my brother died, I saw him in a dream and asked, O oh my brother, ma fa'alallahu bika? How did Allah Almighty treat you? He answered, Now he has freed me because when Ma'roof al-Karhi was laid to rest near us, 30,000 sinners facing punishment buried in each of the four directions of his grave were relieved of punishment. The rank of Sayyiduna Ma'roof al-Karhi Sayyiduna Ahmad bin Fat alayhi, said, I saw Bishr al-Hafi in a dream and asked him, how did Allah Almighty treat Maruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi? He replied, Unfortunately, there are many veils between him and I. Maruf al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi did not worship out of passion for paradise and fear of hell. Rather, he worshipped to attain closeness to Allah Almighty. Therefore, Allah Almighty raised him to ar rafiq al-A'la and removed the veils between them. Therefore, whoever wishes to present a need in the court of Allah Almighty, he should supplicate near the grave of Ma'roof al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. His supplication will be accepted, insha'Allah. A need was fulfilled. Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Abdul Rahman al-Zuhri rahmatullahi alayhi said, I heard my father Abdul Rahman say, Every need is fulfilled at the grave of Ma'roof al karhi rahmatullahi alayhi. Whoever recites Surah al Ikhlas 100 times and asks from Allah Almighty, his need will be fulfilled. I received what I asked for. Sayyiduna Yahya bin Sulaiman rahmatullahi alayhi said, I was poor and I had a need. I visited the grave of Ma'roof al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi, recited Surah al-Ikhlas three times and conveyed the reward to him, to him all deceased Muslims. Then I prayed for the fulfillment of my need. As soon as I returned home, my need had been fulfilled. Location where supplications are accepted. The father of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Mawlana Mufti Naqi Ali Khan Rahmatullahi Alayhi writes in his book Ahsanul Wi'a Li Adab Dua whilst mentioning the places of acceptance of supplication supplications are accepted at the blessed resting place of Ma'roof Al Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi the blessings of the resting places of the noble saints Sayyiduna Ahmad bin Abbas Rahmatullahi Alayhi said when I left Baghdad, I met a person who was worshipping. He asked me, where are you coming from? I answered, I am running from Baghdad because I saw tribulations and I am scared the earth will swallow the people. The man said, go back and do not be scared. There are four graves of the saints in Baghdad which prevent harm from reaching the city. I asked whose graves? He was referring to, and he said, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Ma'roof al karhi Bishr al-Hafi, and Mansur bin Ammar, Rahmahumullah. So I visited their graves and did not leave Baghdad that year. May Allah Almighty have mercy upon them and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Ameen bijahi khatimin nabiyyin. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Four shaykhs are like the living. Shaykh Ali bin Haiti rahmatullahi alayhi said, I have seen four shaykhs who have power of disposal of affairs like the living, whilst in their graves. 
زئی آ شیخ عبد القادر الجیلانی شیخ معروف القرخی شیخ عقیل مم بجی ان شیخ حیا بن قیس حرانی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ علی محمد سپلیکے تھرو مائی انٹرمیڈیشن معروف القرخی رحمۃ اللہ علیز نیفیو یعقوب رحمۃ اللہ علیہ سیڈ مائی پٹرنل انکل سیڈ ٹو می ون ایو یو آسک اللہ المائٹی ٹو فلفل یور نیڈ سپلیکے تھرو مائی انٹرمیڈیشن سیدنا سری السقطی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ سیڈ دیٹ معروف القرخی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ گیو ہم دا فالوئنگ ایڈوائس When you seek something, ask for it like so. O oh Allah Almighty, grant me such and such for the sake of Ma'roof Al-Karhi. You will certainly acquire what you seek. Virtues of Ma'roof Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi's grave. A pious predecessor from the 5th century Hijri, Sayyiduna Khatib Baghdadi Rahmatullahi Alayhi said, The grave of Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi is a place which is tried and tested for the fulfillment of needs. The great muhaddith of the 4th century Hijri, Imam Abdul Rahman bil Ali al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi writes, Visiting the grave of Maruf al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi is a proven remedy for all problems. The erudite scholar of Hanifi fiqh, Imam ibn Abidin al-Shami rahmatullahi alayhi said, Ma'roof al-Karhi rahmatullahi alayhi is from the pious predecessors. His supplications were accepted and supplications for rain are made through his intermediation. He is the noble teacher of Sari al-Sakati rahmatullahi alayhi. O devotees of the noble saints, how great were the earlier generations of Muslims. People visited the noble saints to gain their blessings and supplicate through their intermediation. Sayyiduna Ibn Abidin al-Shami rahmatullahi alayhi, whose statement has just passed, was a great scholar in his own right. And his world-renowned magnum, Opus is Raddul Muhtar. If only those who take benefit from his books follow in his footsteps, and correct their beliefs regarding the noble saints. Dr. Abdul Qadir Khan's column. Dr. Abdul Qadir Khan, deceased, wrote, In Bhopal, a brilliant scholar taught us school children about the noble saints, Rahmahumullah, and he encouraged us to supplicate through the intermediation of Maruf Al-Karhi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. The supplication was, خدا وندا بمقصو دم رسان زود بحق کے حضرت معروف کرخی نگہ داری زے آفت آئے چرخی بحق کے حضرت معروف کرخی ٹرانسلیشن او اللہ المائٹی فلفل مائی نیڈ کوکلی فار دا سیک آف معروف الکرخی پروٹیکٹرز فرام کلامٹیز آف دی ارتھ اینڈ اسکائی فار دا سیک آف معروف الکرخی دس کالم واز ریٹن in the Jang newspaper on the 13th of July. Two days after it was published, a friend called and told me how much he liked what he wrote. He distributed 200 copies of the newspaper to his friends and colleagues. Thereafter, he explained a great blessing of the supplication. His friend's son was missing for three years. Despite searching for him and filing police reports, they could not find him. So he clung to patience and sat back. My friend informed his grieving friend about this column and told him to supplicate through the intermediation of Sayyiduna Ma'roof Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So he performed ablution, offered two units of the prayer of need and made a heartfelt supplication for the return of his son through the intermediation of Sayyiduna Ma'roof Al-Karhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. The father of the child said he sat down for half an hour after praying when there was a knock on his door. He went outside and saw his son standing by the door. Someone had brought him there. May Allah Almighty have mercy upon them all 
and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Ameen, bijahi khatamin nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad.